Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to Germany once again and we have a brewery that I'm really quite interested to try. It comes highly recommended from my friend Peter over at the Clueless Drinker. So today we are going to go to Ingolstadt in Bavaria and we're doing my first review from Yankee und Kraut. So we're going to have a little look at their transfusion. So this one's an India Pale Lager at 4.4% and it's a style you don't actually see that often but it seems to be a bit more popular popular in Germany because obviously the Pils beer is quite popular even amongst kind of craft drinkers and things like that mainly because of the the brewing traditions of Germany I guess but you can as you can see Yankee und Kraut are really kind of distinctive for their style of artwork but really looking forward to trying this one and if you are particularly interested in German beer please do make sure you check out my friend Peter's channel I'll put the link in the description below but he's a lovely guy and he always makes me laugh with these reviews so that's one thing you should definitely check out but anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Yanku and Kraut very first time I'm trying one of their beers of course there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city or state whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there of course for all the German beers that I've reviewed for you and that's constantly being added to and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Yankee and Kraut then so as I mentioned to you Yankee and Kraut are based in Ingolstadt in Bavaria and they were founded back in 2016 by Brian Franz who is originally from Reno in Nevada and Max Zenner who is from Bavaria so Brian's family are really into their food and drink and apparently he used to brew back when he was 17 it is of course illegal in America but Maxie's sport teacher lived in Reno for a number of years and she invited Brian to visit her if he ever passed through Germany which he did on one of his European trips and there basically through acquaintance and coincidence Brian met Max and they went on to taste quite a few different beers on a few different nights so after this Brian came back every year until he had finished his biology studies at university and he then moved to Germany to work as an English teacher for a number of years and later took part in a competition that was held by Ryan Stefan and uh, the university, the Technical University of Munich of course, but this was where he entered the beer that became the Hopulence, an IPL of course, which is the kind of signature beer or the, the flagship beer I guess of Yankee and Kraut and this was their first commercial beer which is was really quite interesting, it is quite interesting to see a, a kind of home brewer just taken off in Germany but they settled on Ingolstadt as the home for their brewery and they set up the company but Brian is now the brewmaster while Max looks after the business side of the brewery so they seem to be doing quite well. They've produced about seven or eight different types of beer uh, according to Rate Beer but I'm sure Peter's told me they have produced quite a few more experimental ones than that but from what I understand when it comes to these new wave German brewers, Yankee und Kraut are one that you definitely want to keep an eye on. So yeah, if you get the chance to try some of their beers, have a look at it. They definitely come highly recommended from Peter and I'm really interested to try this one. But anyway, that's all you need to know about the brewery. Like I said all the links that you can use to check them out are in the description below. But let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself. So I'd just like to have a little look at the artwork of this before we open it up. There you can see that really kind of quite distinctive style of artwork. You can see just up here where my third finger is, you can see the Yankee and Kraut thing, the guy riding the pig, which is uh, quite funny, the cowboy riding the pig. And there you can see it's got this nice little kind of top label on it as well. And there you can see just at the front, Yankee and Kraut. And then it's telling you a little bit about the transfusion beer. And you can see there is the symbol on the bottle cap once again but like I said this one is a 4.4% India Pale Lager and it's hot with Comet, Callista and Pearl so it should be a really quite interesting beer this one. I've not I've tried beers with all of these hops in them before. Pearl is a slightly higher kind of uh, German aroma hop if you like, a slightly higher alpha acid aroma hop. Uh, Comet I've had a couple of times and uh, Callista I'm not sure actually. But yeah, as you can see, a nice smoky opening on this one, and we'll get it out and into the glass. I think Callista and Comet, from what I understand, are a little bit like, no, in a way they are kind of like the Noble Hops, but they just have a little bit more of a fruity quality to them. Callista, I think I've had way back when I first started up the channel, but not thing. I think that it, not so recently. I think it is one of the kind of German hops, actually, one of these new German hops that's coming out. But yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect when it's an IPL, it's poured this really nice kind of 
pale straw golden colour. There's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say, yeah, perfect white head, maybe just a little, yeah, maybe just a little cream tinge to it, but mainly a perfect white head on this one. The beer does have a little bit of haze to it, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, but quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of that head there. But overall, it does look really quite nice, actually. I think it's fair to say this is quite a, a yellow kind of pale golden straw colour, actually. But a really nice looking beer and exactly what you would expect when it comes to a kind of lager beer. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. Ooh, that smells really nice. It's got some of these nice light kind of tropical juicy fruits in it. So you can pick up, there's a wee bit of grapefruit in there, which is from the Comet if I'm remembering rightly. I remember that's one of these ones that just gives you this kind of light, almost pinkish grapefruit character. And there is a wee bit of kind of passion fruit. You can pick up the juicier passion fruit. And I think that that's maybe the Callista there, because I know the Pearl tends to give you this more spicy floral aromaticity. So I think the passion fruity notes are probably coming from the Callista. And there's a wee bit of an almost gooseberry note as well to this one. Maybe a gooseberry, maybe slightly gooseberry or lychee, something like that coming out of this beer. But of course, there is that typical kind of grassy floral note that you expect of the German hops. You can really smell that slightly spicy floral character that you expect of the Pearl. Pearl's a lovely hop actually to use as your bittering hop if you want some of that nice kind of German noble notes in your beer. But yeah, there's some lighter kind of lemon grassy, kind of grassy notes, a wee touch of earthiness. As I say, you expect that from German hops. And you can smell just a little bit of that slightly bready, biscuity malt base that you would expect from a, from a German Pils. Or an India, as I should say, it's an India Pale Lager, it's not particularly a German Pils. But I would suspect that they've used German malt in this one. And that, of course, is one of the interesting things about this German beer scene, is that they're using the kind of classic German malts with these kind of American, New Zealand hops, Australian hops as well, of course. But it does smell really quite interesting, this beer. It's just a nice, kind of light, fruity lager, as I say, a little bit of passion fruit, a little bit of grapefruit. You've got that kind of gooseberry and light cheese note to it as well. The nice, sort of slightly spicier floral note that you expect from the pearl. And then just a few, a little bit of the kind of bready, almost biscuity note coming out of it as well. But yeah, let's have a little look at this beer then. It smells really good. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time to mull over the aroma of your beer, but it's always really interesting when it comes to do that, when it comes to whiskey and sake and things like that. So this one is the Transfusion, an India Pale Lager from Yankee and Kraut, based in Ingolstadt in Bavaria, Germany. Once again, thank you to Peter for the recommendation, and I'm sure this will be a pretty nice beer. Prost! Yeah, that's pretty nice actually. I do like how it comes across. It is just, it has that nice typical smooth mouthfeel that you expect to these kind of German Brauhaus beers if you like. But it's just got a little bit more of that American fruity hoppy character to it. As I always say, sugar the beer around your palate a little bit and just let your whole mouth adjust to it before you start analysing the flavour too much. But this is really quite nice. It's a very drinkable beer. I mean, at 4.4%, it is intended to kind of be like one of these ones that you can session. The Germans, of course, are very into sessioning their beer. And when they, and that's you can kind of understand that compared to Belgium, where you've got a really high alcohol content in a lot of the beers, the German ones are a bit lighter, so they can session them a little bit more. And this one definitely fits into that regard. It's a little bit... It does have that kind of almost typical uh, German Hellas feel to it. To me, this beer feels really like a Hellas, but just with a little bit more of that kind of American hoppy quality and just a little bit more kind of fruitiness to it. But that's nice. I do like how this comes across. So let's analyse it a little bit more then. So with this one, you can feel a little bit of that kind of pale malt just going right across the middle of your palate. There is a little bit of a kind of thicker breadiness on top of your tongue there. And you can feel right in the middle of the palate, there's maybe just a little bit of a sort of biscuity sweetness coming out of this one. I do like how the malt base comes together in this. The German malts always give you this really nice smoothness, but also they balance it a little bit with sweetness, which is really nice.
But yeah, I just, I like the malt base in this one, and it kind of builds a good bridge between the hops as well. So on the hoppy side of things, on the edge of your palate, if you go out to the back corners of your palate, you can just feel a little bit of that earthiness, which is what you expect from the Noble Hops. That'll be the peril coming out. As you come further forward along the sides of your palate, you can feel that slightly floral, uh, the slightly spicy floral character rather coming out of the middle of your, coming out on the, the sides of your palate and that's the peril hop around the very front curve of your tongue there's a little bit of that kind of lighter lemongrassy note in there and it just goes together really really quite well but as I've told you before I'm a huge fan of the German Hellas and this beer to me it does kind of it does it almost just feels like a slightly American hopped Hellas this one And the fruity notes are really nice as well. So if you just go behind the front curve of your palate, that's where you'll feel that little oily bubble that I always talk about. And that's where you start to get these nice fruity esters. So for me, you can feel there's a little bit of a kind of grapefruity note. It's a kind of pinkish grapefruit. It's not quite as strong as a as a kind of regular grapefruit note. You can just feel that underpinning the fruits, but there's also some kind of lighter, sweeter passion fruit just mixing in with that. And as the flavour progresses, you start to get a little bit more of that kind of gooseberry and lychee note that I was talking about in the aroma. And that's really quite nice. That's the Comet and the, the Callista coming out. They're the ones that will give you the, the tropical fruit. I think it's the Comet actually that will give you these kind of lychee and gooseberry notes. But as you progress into the aftertaste, it's some of that spicy floral character that's sitting there. You can get a little bit of the sweetness from the malt as well, but it's that nice gooseberry and kind of passion fruity note that's just sitting there on the tongue that is really quite nice. And that, just as the flavour progresses, that is what kind of sits there in your palate. yeah I have to say I do like this beer and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again I'd love to have the chance to try it on tap actually so maybe I need to go up to Ingolstadt and have a look and see if these guys have got a bar or something like that or go into one of the local kind of beer bars there and see how it comes out but in terms of the mouthfeel of this one then I would say it's mid-bodied, I mean, it is heavy, in terms of the body, it is heavy for a lager beer. Um, it does suit, as I would say, it has that typical German smoothness to it. If it was a Brauhaus Pils beer or a Brauhaus lager, it has the mouthful you'd expect, but when you when you read it's a lager, it's a little bit heavier than you would expect normally for a bottled lager in that style, but that's not a bad thing. The carbonation on this one is quite soft. It's got quite an oily mouthfeel, but at the same time, it does have just a little bit of that kind of uh, smoothness to it. It has that typical German Brauhaus smoothness, like I was saying. There's a good little bit of hoppy bitterness in this one. It's not going to blow your head off in terms of IBUs. The malt base is quite smooth, but it does have a little bit of sweetness to it. And then the fruitiness of the beer is quite nice as well. It's got quite an oily, fruity character to it. And I just like how you get that bit of lighter fruit as you go further into the aftertaste. But overall, it is a really quite nice beer this one. The IPL isn't a style that you come across all that often these days but I guess it's one that is going to be fairly popular in Germany and on the basis of this beer I can see why Peter was quite keen for me to review one of their things for you so hopefully I can have a look at their hopulence or some of their other things in the fairly near future but it's been really cool to do my first review of this brewery. It will be a little bit hard to come across them again I think but I'm sure they will do quite well and continue to expand so yeah it's been really cool to review this one for you. The transfusion from, Rank from Yankee and Kraut in Ingolstadt over in Germany. A really quite nice India Pale Lager. A good hop choice for this one as well actually. Not hops that you find that often in craft beer these days but I think they've made a very solid choice with them and I do like how it just kind of uh, comes out. I guess to me I think this would be a good gateway beer for Germans who are used to the kind of Munich style Hellas but maybe are kind of interested to see how the American hops come out. This one doesn't vary too much from what they would expect from the Hellas but it does start to get a little bit adventurous within that category so I think that's maybe what they were going for with this one but that's me speculating but yeah it have been really cool to do my first review from Yankee and Kraut. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below if you do happen to have tried it yourself. It's always great to hear from you guys but until the next time please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube stuff uh, do check out my social media and things and please do make sure you check out Peter over at the Clueless Drinker. But this has been a really good one. The transfusion from Yankee and Kraut over in Ingolstadt in Germany. Prost.